Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of, excuse me, gift of prophecy, a, a gift of tongues, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's go ahead and open up to, uh, we, uh, we left off, uh, Joshua chapter 2, we finished off. Let's go ahead and open up to, uh, we want to open up to Daniel. What do you got for us? You pick some. It's all good. It's all right. Let's do, uh, let's do Matthew chapter 20. It's Matthew chapter 20. What verse? You got a verse for it too? We can start at verse 1. It's Matthew chapter 20. We're going to start at verse 1. Let's see what it's talking about. You know how that thing go. <laughs> Can't do nothing about that. I bet line up in there. It's Matthew chapter 20, verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. Mm -hmm. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. Mm -hmm. And they went their way. Again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. Okay. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man has hired us. He said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. All right. So he went out early in the day. He grabbed him a couple of me. He said, I need you to do some work for me. Go ahead and jump in there. I'll, I'll pay you whatever you deserve. All right? And then he came back to the other one. He's like, all right, listen, listen, listen. You know what I'm saying? It's a little bit later in the day. Why are you not working? Oh, okay, I got some work for you. Go ahead. I'll pay you what you need. All right? Keep going. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the, beginning from the last unto the first. Mm -hmm. and when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. Mm -hmm. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which mm -hmm. have borne the burden and the heat of the day. Mm -hmm. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Do you, dost not thou agree with me for a penny? Mm hmm Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Right. Take that thine is and go thy way. I will give unto this last even as unto thee. So he's looking at him. He said, listen, I'm going to line y'all up, right? I'll come 6 o'clock in the morning. Hey, you, I need you know, I need some work done. Can you take care of that? Bro? You know, you got to go to like Home Depot. You see the Mexicans out there. He's like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Why don't you come out here? You know what I'm saying? Come work for me. I got some work for you. Yeah. So Mexican hop in your truck. You go, you know what I'm saying? You go and you take it, all right? He do the work. He started at six o'clock in the darn morning. And you go back out to that same spot. And you grab a couple more. You're like, why y'all? Y'all ain't got picked up for work yet? Come on, hop in the truck. Let me take you. you know what I'm saying, do some work. You know what I'm saying? I just want to get some work done. So you tell him, no, 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 I'm gonna give you a penny too. Don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? We say hundred dollars, right? So he gave the first group. He said, I'll give you a hundred dollars for it. He comes to the next group. They come later in the day. Let's say it's you know, let's say it's nine o'clock now. You know what I'm saying? I give y'all a hundred dollars too, right? So we agree with them a hundred dollars. Sent them on, right? 
Then the last group, he come toward the end of the good, the end of the day. He tell them, hey, y'all, y'all ain't working, y'all ain't got nothing to do. All right. Well, I tell you what, come this way. I got some work for you. I'll give you a hundred dollars if you do it. So it's the end of the day. So he say, all right, let's pay everybody. It's the end of the day. Everybody done working. Let's pay everybody. But let's start with that last group. Right? You come and you remember. I don't know what T agreement is. I know I agreed to work for $100, right. and I know I started at 6 o'clock this morning, right? So I'm looking, and I'm like, T just got here an hour ago. I've been working here for a full eight hours. T just got here an hour ago. But I see T go first to get paid, and he get $100. Same $100 I would promise. So immediately in my mind, I'm thinking, well, if he worked one hour and got $100, and I worked, $100 was a good idea. When he just came up to me and said, hey, I got some work to do. You got some work to do? $100? Yeah, I'm not going to do it. You know, I'm not going to out there and start raking, start doing everything I need to do. That thing is a good idea. Now, when I see another man, and he get paid $100, and he only worked one hour, mm -hmm. and I think about the long hour and the long toil that I had out here, and I've been working in this yard, and I'm going to get the same thing he got, now that begins to upset me. Why is that, brother? Well... Figured that you was there first, you would have gotten more. But that's not what he promised you. That's not what he promised you. That's when we start looking beyond the promise. Mm. Right? That's a nice little parable we be looking at, but you gotta let that parable sink in. Yeah. A lot of us are looking beyond the promise. The man told you what he gonna give you. Period. He told you what he gonna give you. So you know what we start wanting? I want all my kids to be healthy. Right? I mean, I work hard for the Lord. <laughs> I mean, I don't deserve to have this disease. Deserve to have this sickness. That's not necessarily what I promise you. Right? Although there are promises that, you know what I'm saying, you keep the law here, take all the sick the diseases away from you. Right? So if we look at it, we have to be able to look into the book and see what did the man promise me. And in our heart can't be evil if we see somebody else Getting something that we think we deserve because we work so hard. Because the, the man's whole setup is the last is going to be first and the first is going to be last. Mm. How you going to play that thing out? How you going to play it out where you think that you're supposed to get exactly what everybody else gets? A lot of people will tell you these lies be like, listen, everybody's like, you know, hey, your life is difficult in one place. Other people's life is difficult in different places, but everybody's lives equal out. That's a darn lie. Because if that was the truth, this parable wouldn't make sense. I know some dudes that have some real tough life. Man, some of these people, y'all ain't beating nobody with this yeah. tough life stuff. Some of these people out here really out here struggling. Y'all ain't seen no tough life like everybody else out here. I ain't gonna sit here and tell that lie. Right. I ain't gonna sit here and tell that lie. I know some people, it's like, mm, nah, my life ain't as tough as yours. I appreciate the most high God. My life ain't as tough as yours. Right? That's why the first is gonna be last and the last is gonna be first. Your life ain't that tough. You know what your boy should be doing? Down there bearing the burden for your brother and for your sister. It makes it hard. It makes it more difficult. Let me lift you up a little bit. That way we can get through this thing together. Most High God didn't put that all on me. He didn't put all that on me. You know what I'm saying? He didn't put it all on me. So you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to take what he did give me and I'm going to share it with you. And that's what it's all about. Right? That's how we got to be able to look at each other. All right? That's what we see when, when the Most High God was start, starting us out and he gave us our law, right? Back to the back to the law. When he gave us our law, that's what you can see, the spirit of our law. You hear the Christians talking about, it's about the spirit of the law. You know what that means to them? Don't do it. <laughs> it's about the spirit. I mean, you just got to do the spirit of the law. You know what that means for them? <laughs> nah, I ain't thinking about that thing at all. You got to, I mean, the whole, the whole law summed up in love your neighbor as yourself. What that mean, Christian? What it mean to love your neighbor? Grab us. Uh, you're about to get started now. Grab for me a, uh, grab a, uh, what I want? First Corinthians 13. I'm going to take their side of the book. They, look, Christians took control of the New Testament. <laughs> they took, Christians, look, Christians took this New Testament over so bad, they got our Hebrew brothers, to, they throw the New Testament away. Hebrew brothers don't even want to believe it. <laughs> hey, like, man, the Christians made a mess of that thing. We don't even believe in the New Testament. <laughs> the Christian and the Hebrew that say that is a fool. You know what I'm saying? Y'all both fool. That New Testament is solid. How you got a whole book that's been prophesied in the Old Testament? You gonna, you gonna look at the Old Testament and say, I'll take that, but I ain't gonna take what it prophesied of. You a darn fool. And you a fool if you look at the New Testament and say, you know what, that Old Testament done away. How you gonna say it done away when this whole thing stands on top of the Old Testament? 
The man, when the man walked among us, the man walked along, he looked y'all dead in the eye and he said, what did your law say? But you gonna throw it away when the man asked you what did the law say? These people in law they darn my dad. I don't know what their problem is. The book right here though, you know I know what the problem is. Most high God blinded him. He put blinders on it. He did it on purpose. And he righteous for doing it. It's right. It's right that we sitting here in the stupor. It's right that we don't know what we darn talking about. That we bump our darn head. That we got 33 different denominations trying to talk about we serving God. That thing is right. It's right that these people going to go right to darn hell if they don't repent. And it's right that we go through hell just to darn darn get to repentance. It's right. All of it's right. We got to look back and say our father sinned against the man. And the man told us time and time again, repeated it to us. You must do this. Don't make sure you don't do that. When you go over here, stay tuned because you know this going to happen. The man told us before we walked into the lane, he said, you know what? I already know y'all going to turn y'all backs on me. Y'all going to go whoring after these other gods. None of that stuff made us consider. All of it, we just sit there like, yeah, praise God, just like we do now. Praise God, Mosey on the lawn, ran into the brick wall, and he shut our butts down. When we going to stop and say, back, okay, you know what? I got to understand the law. We got Hebrew brothers out here teaching this book, teaching this book. And they, they got Christian minds still, right? In their mind, they still Christian. They not Christian, right? They'll tell you flat out, I ain't no Christian. Get mad if you call them Christian. But their mind is still Christian. We all raised as Christians. So their mind is still Christian. So even though they say, you know what? I don't believe the Trinity and I don't believe that the law is done away with. Like they take those doctrines and they believe it. They still uphold contradictions in their mind. So you know what they're going to say? Edom is the white man. The book tells you very clearly that's our brother. But you know they're going to go with that and they're going to roll with it. Right? It's the contradiction. You know what else they're going to tell you? You can't be saved unless you keep the law. You've never seen no book tell you that. The law itself won't tell you that. You know what the law going to tell you? It's going to be a man. He's going to come. And he's going to speak my words onto you. And he's going to be just like unto Moses when he comes. Whatever he say, it will be required of you. When have you ever heard the book say, you can't be saved? When, when did the law ever promise that you're going to make it into a kingdom? Never. But you, because you, you got a Christian mind, none of, that stuff, none of it matters. It's just Christians, this is all Christians did. Christians, and we got a video coming out on it. All Christians did is Hebrews were removed out of the way, right? These Romans took us out of the way. So the Christians had, they was half talked about. Some of the Christians really wanted to follow us, right? We came, the Most High God sent our people out to go teach these Teach these uh, Gentiles. So at the time we teaching the Gentiles, we teach them, you a disciple. Ain't no such thing as no darn Christian. You a disciple. We taught them you a disciple. But you know what these other Romans that didn't believe, you know what they learned? They said, your black butt is a Christian and your white butt is a Christian. They called both of us Christians. We look now like, eh, we don't care what you call it. We know we serve the most high God. Right? So then after that, Romans start getting a little irritated with this process. They said, you know what? Let me get your black butts up out of here. You read the history books, they ain't going to say it like that. They ain't going to say they, they attack the black folks. But if you read into it, same thing happened today. They got, a black, they got our black butts up out of there. So then where does that lead to Christians? Who is that? Right? Christians looking over. Christians have got the book. They got a piece of the information. They know, all right, a man named Yahushua died on the cross for our sins. They know that part. And then they know that they got the book. And they know they ain't got to keep all of the law. Right? They, all these different things. In order for me to make it, I don't have to perfectly keep the law. I know that I got this book, and I know that this man died on the cross for my sins. So they're trying to put this stuff together, trying to make it work, trying to put it together, teaching each other. So I'm a student, but now guess what I'm going to start teaching? Another student. And guess what that student going to start teaching me? How long do you think, how many generations do you think before this thing just go all the way to dirt? 200 years later, you got these people in the council at Nicaea making stuff up. Trinity. Jesus and God and Holy Spirit, three different persons, but they all God at the same time. They sitting there arguing about all this stuff. They start coming out with images of God. Images of them. They start coming out with chiros and crosses and all these different things. All this idolatry. A little bit later, what you get? Christmas. You get darn Easter being celebrated in that, in that fashion. We're celebrating fertility. All these di different things come. If I don't... Okay. If I'm a Hebrew, you get to tell me stuff from the New Testament. If I'm a Hebrew, you know what I'm going to apply that to? My history. 
I'm gonna look at my history. I'm gonna look at my laws. I'm gonna look at my tradition. And I'm gonna say, mm, that New Testament makes sense. Any gaps that I may have had, I would fill it up with the new, I mean, with the Old Testament. I'll fill it up with my history, my traditions. That's how I understand the world, right? The problem is with Gentiles, they try to do that same thing. They don't have a history. They don't have the traditions. You know what they do have, though? Pagan history. Pagan traditions. So when you tell me, um, like Romans 14 says, right? Romans 14 very clearly says one man serves on this day, one man serves on that day. They don't have a history to say, well, the Sabbath is solid. That's Romans. Isn't that Romans? That Romans 14. That was Colossians. No, I think it's Romans 14. Romans don't Romans go up to 14? Yeah, grab Romans for me. It's Romans chapter 14. Let's make sure I ain't throwing no, no lie out here. Right? So you you get here and you say, you say, one, you know, one man, one man, one man uh uh esteems all days, all seven days. One day, one man only esteems one day. For a Gentile that don't have our history, you know what that just said to you? Sabbath don't matter. That's what it communicated to you because you don't know how important the Sabbath is. Nobody's ever taught you that that's the only day of the week that the Most High name. Nobody's taught you that. Nobody emphasized that point. You've never grown up and that's the only day that you were excited for every week. You never heard the story, Yahushua pop up. He said on the Sabbath day he came to read. That's not important to you. You a Gentile. So guess what? When Hebrews is moved out of the way and I got to teach this book, guess what I'm going to say? Sabbath don't matter. And guess how I'm going to reinterpret things? You know what day mattered in my history? Sunday. Because that's when we worship the sun god. No, 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 I don't worship no sun god no more. You know why I worship now? Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for my sins. You know why I'm going to worship him? How I'm going to worship him? Same way I worship this sun god. That's, that's why I'm going to put a star on top of my tree. What do you think that star was about? Yeah, it was bowing down to the sun god. That's why, you know, Easter come along. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to celebrate it on Sunday. What, is, what was Easter originally? Where did where they, where they pull this crap from? Passover. But guess what? Passover don't mean nothing to a Gentile. I'm a Gentile. What do I care about a Passover? So you know when it comes down to it? Well, I know Jesus Christ died on... You know what? Let's just call it Easter and let's make sure it's always on a Sunday. You do change every year. Always on a Sunday. They make a fool of themselves because the Most High God set them up that way. He moved us out of the way. He told us he was going to do it. He moved us out of the way. He said, I'm going to replace you with a foolish nation. That's what he said. That's Deuteronomy. He told us before we got into the land this was going to happen. I'm going to replace you with a foolish nation. And now we look around and we say, I don't know, when is Christianity going to have a revival? How is Christianity going to have a revival? Why don't y'all reclaim y'all stuff? The book been given to us. We see our kids getting shot up, acting fools, shooting each other. These white folk, when they get too close to them, you know what they say, these Gentiles? You know what they say? Why can't y'all just get it together? Why is there so much violence? Teach us the truth. Stop lying to us. Stop trying to confuse my people. When I'm out here trying to teach them, stop trying to shut me up. Stop trying to limit the amount of views you can get on my video. I got a, I got a Twitter page. And I got the same amount of followers that I always had in my entire life, right? Same amount of power. Back when I was running wild, I'm trying to tell you, I used to say something back in the day. Everybody used to see it. I go now, I'm asking people, I just tweeted, did you see it? Because I'm looking like, why, why I ain't getting no activity when I say stuff? Now people be like, they don't even see what I'm talking about. Come out later, the Republicans right now is complaining right now. They complaining, they like, they like, uh, they like, it seems that we've been muted or something on Twitter. Twitter comes out and, be, and they got caught in the scandal. Right? They got caught in it because certain Republicans, they stuff not being seen on Twitter. So I heard that and I was like, I knew I wasn't going darn crazy. I knew I wasn't darn going crazy. They got, man, I'm trying to tell you, these people got algorithms and programming. You say certain stuff, you see, 
Man, go ahead and uh, scrape that thing. You know what I'm saying? Don't let nobody see. Make sure only this many people see it. Then they, they, they control all this stuff. I don't trust none of these people. Teach my people the truth. You want to stop shooting each other and shooting up y'all? Teach our people the truth. Teach us the truth. Then you got to worry about your darn people because y'all the ones really shooting people up, shooting each other up, talking about black on black crime. Y'all better worry about your own darn stuff. I don't know what's wrong with these people. All right, what we want? It's Romans chapter 14. We just want to make sure it's, it's where, I, where I thought it was. Romans chapter 14. Well, I'm looking for like verse 7. Verse 5. Verse 5. It's Romans chapter 14, verse 5. Let's one, grab it real quick. One man esteems one day above another. Uh-huh. Another esteems every day alike. Uh-huh. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Right? You know what that just said to a, a Gentile? I'm a good Christian. I can go on Sunday if I want to. Don't, don't you, look, look here, Hebrew, don't you ever tell me about no Sunday worship. Christians are firm in that thing. You ain't never going to see nothing about no Sunday worship in this book. You march your darn model. Goodness gracious, if the most high God to let me out, slap the taste out of these people's mouth. What's wrong? It's just disrespectful. Like, why would you look inside of this book that he gave to my people and here and tell me I can worship on a Sunday, then teach my people to worship on a Sunday? So now I gotta look at my brother square in the face and tell him, nah, man, you a Hebrew. Don't be following after these people's tradition. And he's sitting here arguing to me about a Sunday. Ain't nothing wrong with a Sunday now, brother. I'm like, oh, man, you got my brother confused. You got my daddy confused. All these different different people confused. Yeah, right, that stuff is irritating, man. That's why we be out here frustrated. And I appreciate the Hebrew brother because they got the passion for it. They just got to get the information. That's true. Okay. They got to stop all that cut. I got man, look, this is a couple good Hebrew brothers. I be looking at. I mean, you want to call them good, and in my mind, I want to call them good, right? Cause I just see some of the stuff, and I can see their passion. They be running their darn mouth doing a whole bunch of cussing though. They can't stop using the M word. Can't stop using the, the, the D word, the F word. All these different words. Everywhere you can think of, they using it. And they call themselves ministers of the Most High God. Can't control their tongue. I just be looking at them like, man, we almost there. It's just a little, few little things we got to clean up. The information is there. We can do it. But the Most High God ain't going to reveal the whole truth to nobody who keep on sinning. He going to let you get just enough to think you're doing something. And just because your butt keep on sinning, your butt be drowning in that knowledge that he gave you. That's why we go back to the history. That's why we go back to the law. Because if we do that, we can understand. We can provide comment. We are, we just as good as Gentiles. The Most High God looked at us and he told us, you are not my people. What do you think that means? Gentile. Get your butt over there. Boy, you a Gentile in my eyes. Gen. We just as good as Gentiles. We've been taught by Gentiles. We surrounded by Gentiles. We took on Gentile traditions. All the different stuff. We just as good as Gentiles. The only thing that can, 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 can bring us salvation is obedience to the Most High God. That's the only thing that's going to rescue us. That's going to give us back a clean mind. Cleanse us from all this mess that we in. People make a darn fool out of us. We got to get our history. And that history starts with the law. And now that we got, we got out of the law, we in Joshua. It's Joshua chapter 3. We left off Joshua. Joshua. We finished off Joshua chapter 2. You know what I'm saying? Now we're going to pick up Joshua chapter 3. You remember Joshua chapter 2, we went into the uh, we went into the land, you know what I'm saying, to Jericho, we sent out two spies. And he ran across a woman. Who what was her name? Rahab. Ran across Rahab, right? So we went to Rahab. Rahab was like, listen, <laughs> I didn't heard. You know what I mean? Rahab said, I heard. I heard how the man split the whole sea for y'all. She said, man, we heard about that stuff. And the people of this land, our hearts trembled. She is like, listen, let's make a deal. You know what I mean? I won't tell nobody about y'all if y'all save me and my family, my father's house, a lot. We is like, okay, we can do that. But we can't be responsible. You put this scarlet rope, the same one you let us down by, you put this scarlet rope up, and we can't be responsible for anybody who come outside that door. And we talked about last week uh, how that testifies of Yahweh Shua, mm. right? That scarlet rope, the one that they put outside the door, or put outside, put out, put outside the window. You know what I'm saying? The scarlet rope represents the blood that we put outside our doorposts for the Passover, yeah. and we yeah. know that Yahweh Shua was our Passover lamb, mm. right? So it passed over us for the judgment, the same way that we did Rahab. And he also had another condition. Moses told us for the Passover. He said, "Don't nobody come outside that house." Mm. He said, stay your butt in the house. Same thing with Yahushua. We got to stay in Yahushua. 
anything outside of y'all sure that thing get burnt up right weeping and gnashing the teeth he said from the outside right so we looked at it and look just looked at everything that we look at it always testifies to y'all sure so let's keep going this is joshua chapter three we're gonna start at verse one let's talk about this book and joshua rose early in the morning mm -hmm. and they removed from shittim and came to jordan mm -hmm. he and the children of israel had lodged there before they passed over and it came to pass after three days that the officers... How many days? Three days. Uh-oh. Came, came past after three of them days. That the officers... Mm -hmm. were, that the officers went through the host. And they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests and Levites bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place. He said, When you see that Ark of the Covenant... And you see the priests and the Levites bearing it, they're carrying it, make sure y'all start to move. Alright? That's our marker. We need to start moving. Let's keep going. And go after it. Uh -huh. There shall be a space between you and it, and about 2,000 cubits by measure. Uh huh. So he said it's going to be a how long of a space? 2,000 cubits by measure. He said it's going to be 2,000 cubits by measure. So, in other words, when the Ark of the Covenant go, you let it go. 2,000 cubits later, I want you to follow. That's important. Remember that. Keep going. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go. Uh -huh. For ye have not passed this way here heretofore. Mm -hmm. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Mm -hmm. He said, Tomorrow the Most High God is going to do wonders among you. Jump over to uh, chapter 4. Watch this. Let's look at these wonders. It's Joshua chapter 4. Give me verse uh, 14. It's Joshua chapter 4, verse 14. Remember, the Most High God, he told us, he told us last week in Joshua 1 and 2, he told us like, okay, Joshua, I'm going to pick you out and I'm going to show these people that I'm going to be with you just like Moses. So that's why he got to do wonders in front of him. Because these people got to be able to trust him almost like they trusted Moses. Otherwise, the whole thing going to fall apart. Right? So Most High God said, okay, let me do some wonders to let everybody know. You know what I'm saying? I'm with you just like I was with Moses. All right, let's see. And the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Command the priests that bear the ark of the testimony that they come up out of Jordan. Mm -hmm. Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come ye up out of Jordan. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord were, up, were come up out of the midst of Jordan, and the soles of the priests' feet were lifted up unto the dry land, that the waters of Jordan returned unto their place and, flow, and flowed over all its banks as they did before. You see that? Mm. So when they stepped out into the Jordan, this is a river. This is a whole river. They stepped out in that river, they stopped. The river just stopped, dried up. Right? It dried up. Then they walked across that thing. After they got done, the river just came flowing again. They saw that, they were like, Alright, I got that. Let's go. Where we headed? Right? Where we headed? Let's see. Keep going. And the people came up out of Jordan on the tenth day of the first month and encamped in Gilgal in the east border of Jericho. And those twelve stones which they took out of Jordan did Joshua pitch in Gilgal. Mm -hmm. And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean these stones? Then ye shall let your children know. Saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. Mm -hmm. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until ye were passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, mm -hmm. which he dried up from before us until we were gone over. Mm -hmm. That all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, mm -hmm. that ye might fear the Lord your God forever. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on, the si on this Watch side it. of the Jordan, westward and all the kings of the canaanites which were by the sea heard that the lord had dried up the waters of jordan from before the children of israel mm -hmm. until we were passed over mm -hmm. that their heart melted neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of israel they heard about that thing all of them like oh man here he come the same one that stopped up you know what i'm saying the red sea he came and now he stopped up the jordan river for these people they like, oh, they coming for us, y'all. All of them scared. They hearts melted. Right? That was last verse? Yeah. Uh, Let's go ahead and go to five. Yeah, we already in the five. Oh, it's five? What, what verse is this? Verse two now. 
Okay. At that time, the Lord said unto Joshua. This is uh, Joshua chapter 1 or chapter 5, verse 2. At that point, the Lord said unto Joshua. What did he say? At that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, Make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Mm. Huh? What time? The second time. He said circumcise they but the second time. Why would they need to be circumcised again? It's a whole new generation. They didn't come up with Moses. It's a whole new people. You know what these people, these people look at, you know what they say? It was never about circumcision. This, so this, this when you talk to these people, see, it, I get caught in the middle of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? I get caught in the middle. Us, the ones of us that know the truth about the word, we end up getting caught in the middle. Because we got the Christians over here, and then you know what they say? It's all about circumcision of the heart. Right? Because that's what the New Testament say. Right. You just circumcise the heart. That's very clear in the New Testament. But then you have you have the the Hebrews, right? The law keepers, right? The one you gotta keep the law. If you don't keep the law, you're going to hell, right? You got them, you know what they tell you? you? Gotta keep the law. So hold on, let me get this straight. If you gotta keep the law, can't break the law, gotta keep the law. Why don't you have to be circumcised? According to the New Testament. New Testament very clear. Right? Very clear. So Paul tells circumcised or not circumcised. So now you gotta make a decision as a as a Hebrew. You gotta be like, that's why a lot of them don't go with the New Testament no more. Cause now you they put you in the corner. Paul very clear. Circumcised, not circumcised. So you know what some of them say? We don't mess with Paul now. You know what I'm saying? Be like Paul, you know what I'm saying? But you know what that's gonna put you? That's gonna put you in another corner. Yeah. You don't mess with Paul, Peter vouched for the man. Right? So in a whole different book, Peter vouched for the man. He is like, man, Paul, you know what I'm saying? He said many things that people don't, you know what I'm saying, people don't understand. So Peter vouched for the man. So now you get a with Paul, guess who you gotta ready to get rid of? Gotta get rid of Peter. Now I'll put you in the bigger corner, because you know why? Because y'all sure said, Peter, you my rock. Upon you will I build this congregation. So now if Peter vouched for Paul, and you get rid of Paul, and then now you gotta get rid of Peter, you gotta get rid of Yahushua. So that's how they end up being Old Testament only believers, if you can even say such a thing. Right? Because they gotta get rid of everything. Just by logically deducing, they've made one assumption and then they've applied this one assumption to everything that they know. So now I got to get rid of everything, right? Instead of looking at the book and say, well, no, I guess you don't have to keep all the law to make it into the kingdom. Does that mean the law is done away with? No. No, you lost your darn mind. You lost your darn mind. It just means that the man is setting you up for a new covenant. Let, I, mean, let's just, I mean, let's just make it less... This is offensive to my Hebrew brothers. They, they hear me talk right now and they, they on their computer screen smacking the keys and all that. They probably want to leave comment, right? It's offensive to them. You know what I'm saying? This is important. Let's just look at it. You got a law. And the law says you will continue to do everything in there or what? Uh, you curse. Your butt going to be cursed anyway. Yeah. So now if you curse, what sacrifice can you do to remove that curse? What, what sacrifice did, did we have in the law that will remove a curse? Ain't none. No such thing as a sacrifice that'll remove that curse. So what you gonna do? Law keeper? You got a curse on you. Now according to the law, you got a curse on you. What you gonna do? Okay, let's table that. Aside from that, the law also tell you that you must obey the man that came in his name with his words like uh, unto Moses. Which we know to be Yahweh Shua, that prophet. Right? So then if that is the law, the law, Deuteronomy tells us very clearly whatever he says is required of us, right? Then if we were to tell somebody something else, ain't that breaking the law? Ain't that speaking against the law? So at the end of the day, we have to look at it and say, did the did Yahushua himself say you must be circumcised? He didn't. He told you what you had to stop doing. He said, these are the sins that defile a man. We have to do that. We have to stop doing that. Then he told you what he wants you to do. He wants you to be baptized, and he wants you to love your neighbor as yourself. How do we learn how to love our neighbor as ourselves? We look into the law. The law teaches us how to love. Right? It teaches us that we shouldn't glean our fields. In other words, we should, we should uh, leave something out there for the poor. Right? It teaches us that if our neighbor's ox runs away, our enemy's ox even, 
run away, then guess what we got to do? Don't just get out there and look at you returning to them. It teaches that, that if a slave escape of our brethren and come knocking on our door, that we got to put that slave in whatever place he want in our territory. All right? That's love. Like, that's how the law teaches love. Now, Christian wouldn't know that. Christian just running their mouth. Right? But if we look at the Hebrew, the circumcision was serious to God. It was never like no, circumcision wasn't no like, you know what I'm saying? Well, nah, it was just circumcision of the heart. They gonna point, they gonna point to, you know, no, nah, it's always been like that, brother. Look at Deuteronomy, it mentioned circ circumcision of the heart. And you almost killed Moses, man? Grab for me, uh, actually, I appreciate you. Yeah, grab Exodus chapter 4. This is Exodus chapter 4, what verse I want? This is gonna be at the end somewhere. Exodus chapter 4, the brother said, didn't he almost kill Moses over not being circumcised? Was it Moses that wasn't, let's read it. Was it Moses that wasn't circumcised? <laughs> Let's just make sure we got the story right. Was, uh, I might have misspoke. Was it Moses that wasn't circumcised? Was, uh, so you mean tell me Moses almost got killed not because he wasn't circumcised, because his babies wasn't circumcised? You gonna sit here and tell me God didn't care about no circumcision? You better shut your darn mouth. You don't know nothing about no darn God if you saying that. Don't tell me it was always circumcision of the heart. No, it was always keep the darn law like he told you to keep it. And if you can't, you can't enter into the land. He'll kill your darn butt. We is right there on the precipice of the land. We crossed the Jordan River. You know what he told us? Yeah, not so fast. Circumcised all eight butts. <laughs> Don't y'all set foot in this, darling. I told y'all the law already. How you gonna make me a liar before you even get in there? Nothing. <clears throat> you circumcised? Yeah, I'm circumcised. Are they circumcised? What do you think would have happened if Joshua just would have kept on moseying along? He'd have killed Moses. He'd have killed Joshua just like he almost killed Moses. It's uh, Exodus chapter 4. Most of God just be trying to save people alive. Y'all don't be paying attention, yeah. though. Been trying to save us since the beginning. Y'all you know I mean? don't be paying attention. Don't touch that fruit. Hard-headed stuff. So what we going to do? I don't, I don't know. That thing, you know what I'm saying? right. That thing is like good for wisdom. All right? We'll give me the knowledge of good. And it looked like it's good to eat. All right. Look at it. <laughs> no, I ain't even going to it. That's how I imagine how that voice at that moment. That was probably a nice strong man out of that, but at that moment, he was like, you know what I mean? That's how they get us sometimes. That's why the most high God said, hey, no, I don't let these women run this thing. You know what I'm saying? Don't let that do it. Y'all still let the women run it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all still let them run it. You know what I'm saying? Most high God already gave, he already gave you the game play. He's like, yeah, I don't even do it. He ain't, he ain't built for it. He ain't built to just let them run it. I'm saying, no, no, no. You, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and, yeah, I gave it to you. You know what I'm saying? You make it happen. Y'all still let these women run it. That don't make no darn sense. And then you let the women, then what we do, then we let the women feel like we're doing something wrong with them. Most like God, most like God set it up that way. And then he, they, we let them tell us that we're doing something wrong. That's crazy. That's crazy. The only reason we let it happen is because we don't trust the, we don't trust the book. The book tells us to handle it one way we should handle it that way. Right? Oh, it's always a touchy stuff. So they don't mind everyone talking about old women. Women equal to men. Yeah, they are. Priest is also equal to men too. Alright? I bet you can't nobody do it up what the priests do, not in our land. Get up there and try to make a sacrifice you want to. Might chop your darn head off. <laughs> I'm a Muslim, dude. We ain't gonna chop no head off, but we'll stone your butt in a second. <laughs> we'll stone that butt in a second. Yeah, I go kill her. Yeah, what's wrong with you? God gonna touch him. This stuff ain't about, about being equal. We don't care nothing about no darn equal. It's about positions. It's about order. The man set it up this way. What you a pastor for? What you what you leading the congregation for? And you sitting here, you got three wives. You got some of these Hebrew brothers. They teach that you can have multiple wives. They sitting there, and let's say, okay, you know what? The book don't explicitly say you can't have multiple wives. I'll give you that. It don't. I'll be talking to a brother online. He'll be like, look, well, you, you know what I'm everything you say, you say it just like the book. You're right. I can't point to one verse that say it is a sin to have multiple wives. You're right. I can point to a few verses that be like, you know what I'm saying, let every man have his own wife and let every woman man have his own husband. You know what I'm saying? I can point to that verse, but it don't explicitly say, it very explicitly says that a man can have multiple wives and we have a law in place for that. So you would expect that it would explicitly say the opposite. I agree. Logically, I would expect that. So I say, you know what, I'm going to dial it back. I ain't going to say explicitly that it's a sin and you going to hell and you got multiple wives. 
What I will say is, though, the book very explicitly say, if you got one wife, or one or more wives, and you divorce one of them, that you commit adultery if you have another. So if you do got multiple wives, and you divorce even one of them things, you better not ever touch another one. You better not, yeah, I can tell you going to hell all day on that one. You know what I'm saying? You better not ever touch another one. And another thing I can tell you you're doing something wrong, folks, is if you got multiple wives, how you preach it? Books say you got to be a husband of one wife. I don't care about you, you know, teaching on the side that you can't lead no congregation, you can't be a bishop. You can't lead a congregation, that's book. But they still do it. They up here leading the congregation. And it's always the one leading the congregation. Got all these wives. Mm -hmm. I wonder why. That's why the book told you. The book already know these women going, you know what I'm saying? These women going to be attracted to a man, you know what I'm saying, that preaching the word of God. The book already know that stuff. Some been divorced like two or three times. Two or three times got divorced and you still up there preaching. That's you better crazy. sit your butt down. I ain't about to sit here under you. Just like I wouldn't sit under a woman, I wouldn't sit under your crooked butt. How you going to read the word to me? It's sitting here telling you flat out what you're doing is wrong, but you just keep on reading it and acting like that ain't the case. You ain't even hiding it. It ain't, it ain't like you hiding the fact you been, you, you just think that thing is okay. So if you reading something that's telling you it's not okay and you still think it's okay, guess what? You ain't appropriate for me. You know what I'm saying? That thing just ain't appropriate for me. This is Exodus chapter 4. Give me verse what? 24. This is Exodus chapter 4. This is verse 24. Watch the most I got almost did the most. And it came to pass by the way in the end that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Uh-huh. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband are you to me. Mm -hmm. So he let him go. Then she said, A bloody husband you are because of the circumcision. What verse is that? 26. Now what verse did you start at? 24. Give me 20, give me 23. And I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. Go, give me 22. Watch this. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus says the Lord it, of Israel. Look, Moses, I got started out, he said, you should say unto Pharaoh. This is what I want you to say to Pharaoh, Moses. Keep going. Thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Uh-huh. And I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if you refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay your son, even your firstborn. So he just told Moses, these are the marching order. You take your butt to Egypt. This is what I want you to say. Right? He just gave that marching order to Moses. Next verse. And I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay your son, even your firstborn. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass by the way in the end that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. That quick. Moses, I got you told. This is what I want you to say to Moses. I'm going to rescue all, all, all your people, all our people, all my people. I'm going to take them. I'm going to rescue them. Right? We going to go. I'm going to take y'all out of Egypt. I'm going to bring y'all into a land. Milk and honey. Next verse. And the Most High God sought to kill Moses. He just gave Moses the marching order. He gave his whole promise. Made this whole picture for the man. Before he can get a chance to do it. Oh, before that, let me kill your butt. Go back down to verse 26. Watch this. So he let him go. Then she said, a bloody husband you are because of the circumcision. Uh-huh. And the Lord said to Aaron, go into the wilderness to meet Moses. <laughs> Soon as that thing got done, he get right back to the business. Oh, Aaron, go meet Moses. He good now. That's how God is. God, do you think God is worried about all the stuff that y'all got worried going on? We sitting here worried about all these different things, like maybe this and I don't know this. Most of God said, look, I'll get your butt right out of the way and we'll get somebody else lined up to do this job. Is you going to do it or not? And then after, after you tell me you're going to do it, are you going to do it right? You think I'm worried about a woman being mad because she can't preach? Okay, yeah, you do whatever you want to do over there. We'll get somebody else to serve how I want them to serve. we get a woman who can, I, trust me, most I got to get him a woman that can serve peaceably, be obedient, and without saying a darn word, win her husband. Without saying a darn word, lead the women. Without saying a darn word, even lead me. Without saying a darn word. While being silent, while being submissive to her husband, that is. Right? Please, please, we have moved him on that. Look, he'll find, oh you, oh, you don't want to preach to, oh, you still want to preach and I told you you couldn't. Oh, okay, don't worry, you keep doing whatever you want to do. We'll get somebody out here that'll really shepherd the king. Without being weak, without compromising, he'll move me. You, you, and anybody else right out of the way and put somebody else in that place. And you better hope that he try to kill you first. 
Because if you don't, you don't even know you're doing something wrong. Most like God just let you sit out there enjoying life. Wake up your butt in hell. You better hope he strike you down and hit something with you. That way you can be like, no, God, I'm sorry, please. What did I do wrong? That's a blessing. What do you think of Moses? You don't think he could have just killed Moses like that? No, he made Moses suffer. Moses started, he obviously suffered because his wife noticed. Moses was suffering. His wife was like, uh, get, get the rock. Twice. After that, he's like, okay, good. Aaron, meet Moses. All right, we, no, we good. No hard feelings. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to teach my son. Get my son, get they butt. Right after, I'd be like, no, no hard feelings. Let's keep going. We have, we can't stop. We can't sit here and cry. We can't sit here and hold grudges. We don't have time. Moving. Tell me one time, I mean, you ever have somebody die in your family? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Somebody real close to you? Mm -hmm. Did it really, really hurt? Yeah. How many days did the earth stop? Yeah, I mean, I mean, did the light, did the sun just stay in its place for a little bit? Because, I mean, Joshua, we're going to read it in a little bit. Joshua made the sun stay in place. That ain't happen for you though, huh? Mm -hmm. So what are we gonna see here in the uh, oh, what's that? Ain't nobody waiting for us. Mm -hmm. We don't get up. Did you still have to go to work the next day if you were working? Yep. School, whatever it was? Yeah, keep going on. I mean, people tell you condolences and I'm sorry and all that stuff. We appreciate that. It ain't, I ain't saying ain't nothing wrong with that. We appreciate it. Cause we supposed to, that's how we got that's how we get through it as each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You get through it, not because the world is gonna stop for you, you're gonna get through it because my brother is gonna see, my sister is gonna see, or even some random Gentiles that don't believe. They going to see that I'm hurting. And they got enough decency that, that, that's God-given to be like, you know what, let me help them out. You know what I'm saying? Let me do what I can for them. You know what I'm saying? The most I got already set it up for the ones that he chose. Even Gentiles are coming there to serve you. You know what I'm saying? They'll be kind to you. You know what I'm saying? They'll give you a little break. But at the end of the day, is the world stopping for us? Heck no. Heck no. That's why the most I got attitude, man. What you talking about, man? You running with the foot. You know the horse is about to come, boy. You can't keep up with the people on foot. Don't you know horses about to come? You have to run with horses next. Okay. Make sure you're ready. We got time for this foolishness. Let's get back. This is uh, Joshua. Where are we at? Joshua four. Joshua five. I think Joshua five two. Mm -hmm. Circumcise the people. At that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, Make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Uh -huh. And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. Mm -hmm. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. At the hill of the what? Foreskins. Just so the Hebrews don't get it messed up. He wasn't circumcising no heart. Your heart ain't got no foreskin on it. You know what I'm talking about? He is circumcised. Generally. Watch the people. Watch the people. Watch what they had to wait for. Keep going. And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. Right? If anybody was wondering why this happened, this is the cause. All the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all of the men of war, died in the wilderness, by the way. They were all circumcised. Egypt, out of Egypt. Right? The ones that died in the way, they was all circumcised. All the kids wasn't. Let's hear about it. Now all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, them they had not circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Until whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord swore unto their fathers that he would give us. A land that flows with milk and honey. And their children whom he raised up in their stead them Joshua circumcised, for they had not circumcised them by the way. And it came to pass when they had done circum when they had done circumcising all the people, uh -huh. that they abode in their places in the camp till they were whole. Hmm. Till they were what? Whole. Till they were whole. Yeah. What that mean? They had to heal up. I ain't never seen nobody get circumcised in the heart and they had to heal. <laughs> it ain't always been no circumcised in the heart, right? That's book. We gotta accept the book. Even when a Christian's right, we don't like it. But even when a Christian got a little something right, trust me, they got plenty. Don't, don't even, don't even worry your little heart about it, Hebrew. It's plenty they got wrong. Right? Why are we gonna sit here and lie on the book about something that they got right? They got right, glory to God. It's plenty that they got wrong. We can argue about something else, I promise. Alright? Keep going. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. 
Wherefore, he did what now? He rolled away the reproach of Egypt. Mm -hmm. You know, y'all circumcised, we good now. Y'all got that filth off you from Egypt. Yeah, we good. Mm -hmm. Step into the land. What y'all waiting for? <laughs> Wherefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at even in the palms of Jericho. They kept the what? Passover. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self same day. Mm -hmm. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten up, eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. There was a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went out. Joshua went out. And he saw Jericho. He said, you know what? It's looking good. And he saw somebody. He was like, there was a man with a sword drawn. Sword drawn. Joshua was with the business. What would Joshua say? What would Joshua say? And he said unto him, are thou for us or for our adversaries? Joshua looked at him like, whose side you on? <laughs> Where you from? You know what I'm saying? Where you right. from? You alright? You over there? You good? You know what I'm saying? You with them or you with us? I'm trying to figure out. You don't look familiar around these parts. What's going on? You alright? Joshua just looked at him like, you for us or you against us? What the man said? He said, nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. He said, hey, as a captain of the host of the Lord as I'm now come. He didn't say I am a captain. He said, I've appeared to you as if I was a captain of the host of the Lord. That's very important that we read how he said that. It was very important. He said, as a captain of the host of the Lord has appeared unto you. What else he said? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? Joshua knew exactly what that meant. He said, my bad. Fell right on his face. He knew exactly what that man was talking about. That man was talking about, listen, you might not want to talk to me like you lost your darn mind. I'm representing the most high God right now. Right? I'm the image of the most high God that you're looking at right now. What you talking about? We even lost your darn mind. Lay your butt down. Why didn't tell him to take his shoe off? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from thy foot, for the place where on you stand is holy. And What's Joshua wrong with you? Somebody tell you take your darn shoe off. You're in the middle of the dirt and they tell you take your darn shoe. You can look at them like they crazy. Not Joshua. Joshua said, mm -hmm. well, didn't he do that to, go ahead and do that. to Moses at one point? Moses said, boy, it's supposed to put you, but take that darn shoe off. What you talking about? You talking to this boy, boy, it's the most high God you talking to. You looking at the image of the most high God, a burning fire. You looking at it, you said, take that darn shoe off. What's wrong with you? Moses, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you talking about. You know what I'm saying? Put that thing right on down. We're going to talk about it a little later what all that means. You know what I'm saying? The, the deeper implication of why they had to take off their shoes. A lot of people don't know all of the testified in the side. Every bit of it testified in the side. Right? But we look at it. Who do you think he is looking at? That's the Messiah. Mm -hmm. What do you think? He said, I'm the captain. I'll lead the ship. <laughs> Remember Moses made a prayer. Moses was like, just set a man over the congregation that can go before them. Go in. Go out. What do you think that was? A captain. Somebody that can lead it. This man came up, he said, man, as a captain of the most high God. Captain of the host of the most high God. What you think this is? You know what I'm saying? Joshua quickly just fell down in the dark face. Book already told him we ain't bowing down to angels. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Ain't that what the book said? Yeah, right. If it was the angel, what he would have said? Don't do that. You ain't got to bow down to me. I'm yeah. just serving like you. You see, yeah. he didn't say that after he bowed down here. Yeah, take his shoes off too. Who else told you that? Who else told you to take your shoes off? Most I got in the burning building. What's wrong with you, boy? You better know who you're talking to. It's the Messiah you're talking to. He ain't know it yet. He ain't revealed himself yet. That's the Messiah you're talking to. The whole thing talking about the Messiah. Whole thing talking about the Messiah. When that ark came through, they said, hey, you know, the ark, you know what I'm saying? You got to go up. Make sure you get 2,000 cubits before you go. What do you think that's talking about? Most High God, he came here, he sent his son here about 2,000 years ago, didn't he? <laughs> All right, y'all think it's a joke. 
You know what I'm saying? Pretty soon we getting up out of here. All right? Man said, 2000, once you see that arc, let 2,000 cubits go first. After them 2,000 cubits, then you start walking across the Jordan. What do you think y'all should grab a revelation for me? Let me talk a little bit before we get up out of here. It's Revelation. Revelation chapter 11. It's Revelation 11, 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in How heaven. How many angels? Seven. Mm -hmm. And there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord mm -hmm. and of his Messiah. Mm -hmm. And he shall reign forever and ever. Mm -hmm. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped God, mm -hmm. saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which are... And was and are to come. Mm -hmm. Because you have taken to thee thy great power and his reign. Mm -hmm. And the nations were angry and that wrath, that thy wrath has come. In the time of the dead that they should be judged. And thou should give reward unto the servants of the prophets. The servants of the prophets. Mm -hmm. To the saints and to them that fear thy name, small and great. Mm -hmm. And should destroy them with, which destroy the earth. Mm -hmm. And the temple of God was open. What happened? And the temple of God was open in heaven. And the temple of God was open in heaven. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his testimony. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and earthquake and great hail. He said the ark of his testimony was seen there? I don't know what that could be. The ark of his testimony? It's it's testimony. What's testimony? Covenant. With Testing. Right? What's the ark? Box. So that's like the holder of his word, right? Let's grab uh, John chapter 1, verse 1. I mean, I'd be trying to put this thing together sometime. When I look at it, I'd be trying, just trying to figure out, okay, ark of the testament. That's the holder of the word. Okay. Let's figure it out then. Let's see how this thing play out. I remember Tony asked me a long time ago. Ark is. He started listening to me a little bit after that, you know what I'm saying? I showed him that. I said, all right, you might know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? You can only have one ark. How are you going to have two arcs? You can only have one ark. One of them had to go before the other one came. Yeah, I figured he wasn't going to let nobody like, defile that. You know what I'm saying? No, one of them had to go before the other one came. You know what I'm talking about? Somebody mess around, you know what I'm saying? Get confused. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got the Ark of the Covenant right here. You got Yahweh Shua walking around. Nah, one of them got to disappear for the other one to come. Right? Where you want to go? This is, uh, let me get, uh, what else I say? John? Oh, yeah, John. Give me John, John chapter 1. Verse 1. In the beginning was the word. Mm hmm. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Okay, and the word was God. And I got that. I got that Trinity thing just like that. All right, keep going. The same was in the beginning with God. Mm -hmm. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Okay, so nothing was made that was made without him. Okay, keep going. In him was life. Okay. And the life was the light of men. The light was the light of men. Okay. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Okay. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Okay. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that uh -huh. all men through him might believe. Okay. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Let me be clear. John was not the light, but he did talk about it. Right? Let's keep going. That was the true light which lightened every man that came into the world. Okay. He was in the world and he was in the world was made by him and the world knew him not. Okay. Just talking about the word again, right? The word that was with God and that was God. Right? Let's hear about this word. He came unto his own and his own received him not. Okay, so the word came unto his own, no, his own received him not. What else? But as many as received him to get to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Okay. Even to them that believe on his name. Okay. 
which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Okay. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And the word was what? Made flesh and dwelt among us. So the word was put inside the flesh? <laughs> Sound like an ark of a testimony to me. You know what they named him? Yahweh Shua. And you know where he went after he died? Right hand of the Father. So you know what's going to happen when heaven opened up? You're going to see the Ark of the Testimony. And a whole bunch of thundering and lightning and all that stuff that Revelation was talking about too. Mm -hmm. Got Deuteronomy for me. Deuteronomy chapter, uh, I think, what I want, 31? Deuteronomy 31, 24. It's Deuteronomy chapter 31, 24. Let's try to wrap this up. Pass when Moses had made an end of writing the words of the law in the book and until they were finished. He said when he came to the end of writing the law in the book and it came to a finish, what did he do? I don't, I don't I have no idea what this book is. Moses commanded that. the Levites which bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord saying, take this book of the law and put it inside in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God that it may be there for a witness against thee. The word got to go inside the Ark. He been trying to tell us the whole time what the man was doing. I got this ark and I'm gonna put the word in it, right? And the and the word is gonna bear witness against you. That's when Yahushua came. He talked to these Pharisees. He talked to. He told us exactly where we were. Hypocrites. He said hypocrites. All right. Give me John. John twenty. It's John chapter 20. Before we grab that, grab go back to uh go back to Joshua chapter uh, 3. Watch this. Go back to Joshua chapter 3, then we're gonna go to John 20. Watch this. We might have missed something. This is uh Joshua chapter 3, start at verse 4. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Mm -hmm. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go, for ye have not passed this way heretofore. Mm -hmm. And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Mm -hmm. And Joshua spake to all the priests, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant, and went before the people. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Uh -huh. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When you are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. Mm -hmm. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come here, and hear the words of the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, mm -hmm. the Hittites, the Hivites, and the Perizzites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Mm -hmm. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passes over before you into Jordan. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tri tribe of man. How many disciples we are? Twelve. All right, keep going. And it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord... The Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, mm -hmm. that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that came down from above, mm -hmm. and they shall stand upon the heap and heap. And it sh and it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people, and as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water. For the Jordan overflowed all his banks at the time of harvest, mm -hmm. that the waters which came down from above stood up and rose upon the heap from very from far from very far from the city, from the city at Adam, that is beside Zeratan, Zeratan, and those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, fell and were cut off, and the people passed over right against Jericho. Mm -hmm. And the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Passed clean over Jordan. That's the end of it. All right? Grab this. Uh, grab uh, grab uh, Mark. 
Mark chapter 19. I'm sorry, Mark chapter 1, verse 19. And then we're going to get John chapter 20. And when he had gone a little further thence, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they... That's Mark? Yeah. 119. Uh, give me Mark 1-9, then. Maybe I'm thinking one nine. And it came to pass that in those days that Yahshua came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized. He of baptized John, where? Of John and Jordan. Nazareth in where? In Nazareth. Came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. In Jordan? He set foot in the Jordan River. Watch this. Go to, go to John chapter 20. Because, I mean, if the Ark of the Covenant hit the Jordan, we got to weigh how many? 20 cubits. I mean, uh, 2,000 cubits. We need 2,000 cubits to pass by before we get the Mosey and Long now. Right? Watch me, y'all, what tell us. This is John chapter 20. Give me verse, uh, we ain't got to start from verse 1. Let's jump down to verse like 11. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. Mm -hmm. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre mm -hmm. and seeth two angels in white sitting the one at the head and the other at the feet mm -hmm. where the body of Yahushua had lain. Mm -hmm. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? And she said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. Mm -hmm. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Yahushua standing and knew not that it was him, mm -hmm. that it was Yahushua. And Yahushua said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom mm -hmm. seekest thou? And she, supposing him to be a, the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne, him, have borne them hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Mm -hmm. And Yahushua said unto him, Mary. And she, turned, and she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. And Yahushua said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. He said, What father, now? Touch me not. Better get back. Give me about 2,000 cubits. I haven't gone to my father yet. He has to go to the father first. Two two thousand cubits gotta pass by, then we can come together like we're supposed to. He tried to give us a message. He tried to let us know it's not time yet. It's not time yet. Oh, okay. Acts. Give me Acts chapter one. This is <coughs> Acts chapter one. I don't know what verse I want. Probably uh, probably verse nine. Acts chapter 1, give me, let's see what verse 9 sounds like. Give me verse 8 just in case. When ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judah, and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Mm -hmm. And when he had spoken these things, Watch this. while they beheld, he was taken up. Oh, now ain't what I want. Give me verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days. No, nah, give me verse 4. Give me verse 3. And to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible, infallible truths. In other words, he could prove that thing out. Undeniable. Mm -hmm. Being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Judah, Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which says, He have heard of me. Uh -huh. He have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from here. Uh -huh. And when, when they therefore came together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again? He said, Lord. Lord. They asked him. They said, Lord, will you, will you at this time restore what? The kingdom to Israel. Are you going to do that right now? Lord, Lord, are you at this time? Because they looked at it. I was like, okay, the art passed through. It hasn't been 2,000 cubits, though. So. They looked like, okay, it must be time now. Are you going to restore it? Watch what he say to him. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times of the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. 
But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come unto you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all of Judah and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. You just worry about 2,000 cubits, boy. Back up. Right? We talking about the time. We like, man, is it time now? He like, no, I ain't for you to know the time. We got to wait 2,000 cubits. The ark of the testimony hit the waters in Jordan. Better give him some darn space. Right? If we look at it, so that's how Joshua looked at it. Joshua saw the, the ark. Ark go, water stop. Priests go over. People believe now. They can rock with that. They about to go into the land. Joshua saw the man. Joshua bowed down, took off his shoes. And now it's about to go down. And that small interaction, that gave Joshua what he needed. The people had what they needed. Like, notice how God set it up. Right? He put Joshua in play. Joshua was like, yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? Let all this crack, all these miracles happen. Right? People was like, all right, yeah, now we believe. But Joshua needed something. Joshua was doing his job. Most of our God knew, though, Joshua needed something. Let me show you something, boy. Joshua would get down, bow down. That's what I needed. Right after this, next one, next one that we go, you know what I'm saying? We're going to see all the walls of Jericho just come right on down. He ain't got to lift a darn finger. All right? All because the Most High God got a man to have faith. All right? That's able to, able to walk in the way that he told him to walk. They're able to, able to teach and tell the people the way that he told them to teach and tell the people. No compromise. No side deals. This is what it is and this is how it goes. Most High God can work with that. Any questions? All right. Let's pray out.